Question number eight. Describe the transformation to the parent function in the given equations. So in other words, we're starting from the parent function and we have transformed to this location. So, a couple of things to notice. I notice right away that there's a negative sign there. Well, the parent function for a quadratic does not have a negative sign in front of it, which means we have reflected over the x-axis. Okay. The next thing I notice, there's a value inside the parentheses here. That represents the x value of my vertex but we want its opposite so the vertex is actually at 1 comma 0 so we have moved to the right one unit so we have had a horizontal shift one unit to the right All right, question number nine. Okay, I see that there's a one-fourth in front of my parentheses where A would be. And so that's actually going to result in a vertical shrink by a scale factor of one-fourth. Next, it's helpful to know my vertex. My vertex is at the opposite of the inside, so negative 1. Keep the outside, negative 2. So we have a horizontal shift left 1. We have a vertical shift down two. I don't see a negative sign to indicate a reflection, so that's about all we can do as far as our shifting. Question number 10, y equals 3x squared plus 7. All right, it's important to remember anytime we see an x squared here, we can go ahead and put it in parentheses, and then we can figure out what the x value of the vertex is based on what number would be inside that parentheses? Well, the only number that could be inside that parentheses is an x minus 0 for it to simplify down to x. So we know that the vertex has an x value of 0 in the parentheses. The value outside the parentheses is 7. Now, alternatively, <clears throat> anytime we see our equation in this form, we can go ahead and assume that the x is 0. And when we assume that the x is 0, we plug in a 0 and we get a 7 for our y value. That will give us our vertex point. All right, we have a a value of 3, which we know is going to give us either a stretch or a shrink. In this case, it's greater than 1. So it's going to give us a stretch. So we have a vertical stretch. by a scale factor of 3. And we have a, uh, what do we got? Vertical shift up 7. All right, question number 11. We are now asked to write a quadratic equation that has been now, I find it easiest to write, write quadratic equations in vertex form. So we want to shift to the left 3 and up 4 units. That's going to move our vertex. Left 3 would be negative 3. Up 4 would be 4. So we have shifted our vertex to negative 3, 4. There's no mention of a stretch or a shrink. There's no mention of a reflection over the x-axis. So all we need is a vertex form equation 
with the opposite of our x value in parentheses. Keep the value of our y the same. So f of x is equal to x plus, oops, sorry, x plus 3 squared plus 4. Opposite of our x, keep the y the same. Number 12, reflect over the x-axis. Now that's important because that means we have an a that has a negative value in front of it. Move to the right three units. Okay, so if we move to the right three units, we have shifted our x, but we have not shifted our y at all. Okay, so that's going to end up with f of x is equal to, again, I have a negative a with no scale factor given, so just a negative 1. We don't need the 1 unless you really want to put it there. My x has moved 3 to the right, so we want the opposite of our x, x minus 3 squared. And there's really no point in putting a plus 0 because plus 0 doesn't change anything. We know that if there's nothing to the right of the parentheses, the y's have not shifted. Number 13, we want vertical shrink by a scale factor of 7 and move up one unit. Now, if we have vertically shrunk by a scale factor of 7, another way we can say that is that the scale factor is less than 1, so it is actually 1 seventh. Now, I prefer to see your scale factor stated in forms of a fraction when you are shrinking, um, but sometimes it will be notated either way. Okay, so we have a vertical shrink of one seventh, which means my a value is equal to one seventh. I don't see anything about a reflection, but we are moving up one unit. So my y value has gone up to one from zero. My x value has not moved at all. So we are now at zero one for our vertex, one seventh for our a value. So f of x is equal to 1 seventh, our a value comes first, times x minus 0 squared. Well, x minus 0 is x, so I'm just going to go ahead and write x squared in here, My, oh, sorry, plus 1. 